Hey y'all, so here we are. Uh, where are we? We're at the Coleman. Coleman Lakes and Hody Trail. Yes, we're going to do the Talladega National Forest. Yes, Talladega National Forest. Uh, actually, yeah, the, the Chocolaco Upland Initiative. It says over here. We yeah, have Talladega National Forest. Um, we're just south of Piedmont, Alabama. And we are taking a southbound route to down near Heflin to the FS500 trailheads, about 22 miles according to uh, the far out app. We uh, we camped here at the trailhead overnight. Um, kind of can see it over here. Uh, we kind of camped right there. You can kind of see my my uh, trekking pole there. Uh, we left one car. It's uh, my buddy Jordan here. Y'all know him as Snow Cone. He is uh, with me today. And we left his car down at the southern trailhead that we're hiking to. We brought mine up here. We're going to park this one up here, hike to his. And then we're going to ride back up here and grab mine tomorrow. Or, yeah, tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, let's hit the trail here and see where it takes us. It looks like it's going to be All a fun right, y'all. So, we're about 0.3 miles in. We found this little bridge. Uh, he went back to the car to lock the car back up because we forgot to lock it with stuff in it. We found this nice little stream and just nice and peaceful out here with this little bridge a little uh little rock pile there it's kind of nice if i was out rock hounding this would definitely be a place to to come and check out in fact there's a little wow there's a little pathway that comes right over here to it wow okay wish i'd have seen this before i filled up off that bridge i could have come right out here and yeah, I'll come right over here and got in my water this way. <laughs> well, now I know for the next time. And there's the there's the trail over there. He'll be coming down that way pretty soon here. Um, but yeah, so I filled up two liters of water, added my propel mix to it, so I should be good to go now for quite a few miles. Uh, it's going to get warm today, but. What I'm looking at here is it's going to be warm, but man, there's a lot. We're not very exposed. We're definitely in the green tunnel today. So that ought to keep it cool, keep it comfortable out here for us. It is an absolutely beautiful forest. Again, it's part of the Talladega National Forest. Um, I'm going to say we're probably about 20 miles or so north of Anniston, Alabama. Um, we, like I said, we got on at the Coleman Lake Trailhead. And uh, for the, of the Pinhoti Trail, and we're heading south to the FS 500 Trailhead, uh, which is uh, just outside of Heflin, Alabama. Um, at that trailhead, you can also take the Heflin Spur, which you can hike right into Heflin from the trail. So we're gonna we're gonna go to that trailhead. I don't. We're not gonna do the Heflin Spur, I don't think. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head down there, grab his car, drive it back up here where we're at and pick up my car and then head home tomorrow night so it's going to be a fun hike uh by the way his screen he informed me after the last segment and after i filmed the last segment that his uh trail name has changed he just recently spent a four to you know three or four days out in the smokies uh hiking up a couple weeks ago and uh he got a new trail name while he's out there his new trail name is baffles uh because uh i guess the down in his quilt had uh had settled and and uh he got somebody else to help him get everything put back in order in it and they they dubbed him baffles so that's his new trail name no longer snow cone he's even changed his youtube channel which by the way i will link in the description below i will link his youtube channel and uh and y'all can go check it out he's he's a really cool guy uh, I'm really enjoying hiking with him. Really enjoying spending time with him. He's a he's quite a character, but uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we're gonna make some good miles. Our plan today is to make about 14 miles to a shelter, um, the Lower Shoal Shelter, I think is the name of it. And that's where we plan on camping tonight, and then head out in the morning. That'll give us about eight and a half miles or so to the trailhead tomorrow and this isn't a very tough trail it doesn't appear 
uh, compared to the other part of the Pinhoti that I've already hiked, which was a pain. So yeah, here we go. Um, we're just waiting on him to get back from locking the car up, and then we will be heading down the trail. So oh, here he comes. <laughs> you can see him back there through the trees, making his way to us. All right. All right, y'all. We find something interesting along the way. I will make sure I film it. Until then. Hey, y'all. So, we're about two miles in. And uh, it's been a nice little hike. It hasn't been hard. It's been a little ups and downs, but nothing bad. Uh, he's over here leaving a note for a friend of his that's supposed to meet up with us. Because uh, there's a burn area ahead that may turn him around and he's supposed to meet up with us later on and we want him to know that we're hiking through it so <laughs> well there was another hiker that we met at the trailhead that told us about it and he said he hiked through it and so he said that was yesterday it was kind of sketchy a little bit but he said it should be okay today so we're gonna chance it uh we made it to the shoal creek church uh, built between 1885 and 1890, this church is one of the last six remaining hewn log churches in Alabama. Another church preceded this one and was constructed around 1823. Most of the cemetery markers are not dated, but two are dated in the periods of 1836 to 1924 and 1811 to 1895. Many people still proclaim this as their home church. An old-timey sacred heart four-note singing is held here every Labor Day. So we're going to go check the church and cemetery out here while we're while we're here kind of neat here's a an old grave marker over there wow there's not even anything left of the headstone i mean this is an old grave wow Very overgrown. There's some graves over there. Wow, these gravestones have just faded away to nothing. Confederate Army. Right Confederate Army. 1936. Oh, there's a grave right there. I don't want to walk on it. 1836 to 1924. Private and Company D-22 South Carolina Regiment. Confederate States Army. John R. Roach. Wow. 22nd South Carolina. And he's buried in Alabama. Wow, there's some grave markers back there. There's a... Uh, 1894 and that's in really good shape for an 1894 stone makes me wonder if maybe that wasn't replaced later on how cool is this Yeah, we're going a little bit off the trail to see this. Somebody had a somebody camped out here and put a fire here. There's a porta potty. <laughs> it says women on it too. <laughs> it's got a women sign. That's great. Oh, there's the men's porta potty down there in the woods.
work. Wow. Why? Why have people got to do like that? And they reinforced it with yeah. modern lumber. Cool. This is really cool. I don't know what this is for a church picnic. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the ladies' room. There's the men's room. <laughs> it's an old timey church with all the modern conveniences. <laughs> but you know what? This would be a good camping site if you if you really needed a place to camp. I wouldn't want to camp up there in the cemetery, but. Pretty cool. So these graves here, this one here is pretty sad. Lilar Sophronia Harris, daughter of Mac and Nancy. Born November 20th, 1909, died November 20th, 1909. So she died at birth. And this is Nancy Jane, wife of Mac Harris. So that's the mother. She was born February 1880 and died in January of 1910. So she only lived two months after her daughter died at birth. And I don't see Mac out here anywhere. So I don't know where Mac ended up at. He might be one of these little unmarked cross graves here. But I don't see Mac Harris at all. All right, so it's uh, about 11 o'clock. I think it's, is it 11 o'clock? 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yep, no, it's 10.59, it's 11. So it's about 11 o'clock. We stopped here at the uh, Laurel Shelter for a little bite to eat and take a load off for a minute. Probably about a half hour or so we sat here, ate some protein bars, drank some water. Took a little ibuprofen and Tylenol myself because my feet are starting to hurt a little bit. But uh, we came in over there. And we're going to go out over this way and go up that hill. You can kind of see where they started burning up there a little bit. And, uh, yeah, nice little spot. So we got about, oh, 11 more miles due today. 10, 11 more miles. And we should be there. We're thinking somewhere around 5-ish this evening to camp. Set up camp there. Cook a little dinner. Tell some lies. <laughs> so yeah it's been a nice little peaceful trail it hasn't been very strenuous oh look at that 
I'm going to have to cross that damn water. It looks like it. I can't put my shoes back on. Well, damn, if I'd have known that, I'd have put my water shoes on. You know what? It looks like it can do it. I didn't even bring it. I bet I can do it. And we got a... Yeah. You can go for it. You can rock hop. It looks like... Oh, there's look at... Snake. Hey, yeah, there's a no rope. Yeah. Yep. Now we see the snake on the trail. Yep. I saw one over on the Odom Scout Trail. It was laying in the trail and I didn't see it. Sure. Damn near stepped on it and it took off running across the... Oh, yeah. You can step to your right over there. There's a rock right there. To your right on the other mm -hmm. side. Right there, yeah. You can make that, damn it. You got longer legs than I do. <laughs> he crawled up in a hole in the, in the bank. He came out of the hole, saw us, and turned around and went right back in. All right, my turn. I'm going to turn the camera off for this. We found the burn area. He even got us a little... A little smoldering still going on here. Trail's still well marked. How the hell did that how the hell did it not burn this? That's what I want to know. How did it jump over the trail? Very smoky smelling through here. Pretty neat. And there's still just enough smoke in the air that you can kind of feel it. Man, are we climbing all the way up this ridge? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice and pretty over there. Black over here. Rocks everywhere. And it's green over here. It's like one side of the trail is untouched. All they did was burn the little section between the trail and the creek. Pretty creek down there though. Yeah. This is what it looks like when they do a prescribed burn. Yeah, nice little rock outcropping. Oh wow, it's still burning up there.
can really smell the smoke. You can kind of see it. <laughs> Trees are still kind of smoldering. Switch back. <laughs> I was just thinking their little pink tape they put across the trees. Yeah. We get in trouble. I mean, that's not going to hold up in the corner. Yeah, because there was no sign. No burbers or anything. They're not in there, nothing like that. Just a pink piece of tape. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I got an idea. It's kind of along the same lines of pink blazing. like a wasteland in here, like post-apocalyptic wasteland. And guess what, man? We climbed that ridge. Well, almost. We still got some more uphill here.
All right. That's pretty cool. I think it's been the biggest climb since we started. Smells like a campfire. Hmm. At least I gotta worry about my mosquitoes up here. Wow, it's like a volcanic crater. <laughs> yeah, nothing to rock there, Dave. <clears throat> Very smoky. Okay. I just hope the shelter we camp at tonight has level campsite. Oh, it's still, still flames on that one. Guess I ain't got to worry about any ticks over here. Got any hot dogs? You can have lunch. Let's see back where I'm back where I'm from. It was Gwaltney and SK. SK was the official hot dog of the Baltimore Orioles. And in Maryland, when you buy a pack of SK, they always got the Orioles logo on it. Yeah. And that's what they serve at the stadium. At least the way it used to be. I haven't been back there since 2016, so. Well, no, I have been back twice since 2016, but. Not long enough to go grocery shopping. <laughs> mm. 
And we're going back downhill so we can go back up here in a little while. It still amazes me how the trail itself is untouched. But I'm not sure how because it's got all these dried leaves all over it. Oh, that's some big poops. Oh, don't know. Looks like cows. Oh, oh, he's flying away. It's cool. Sweetwater Lake. It's beautiful. <sighs> We're still marching through the burn zone here along the edge of the lake. <laughs> so, let me catch up. He done left me behind. Got a nice little stream here. Just kind of came out of nowhere. Like we were just coming through this uh, green tunnel here and found a stream. <laughs> so yeah, kind of pretty, kind of nice. That looks like something I'd like to sit my butt in. Oh yeah. And soak my legs at the end of the day. I bet my feet would feel good soaking oh, in there. Pretty deep too. Yeah, they're like right there. That's deep. That's like six feet right there, at least. Huh. So yeah, we're about two and a half miles from lunch, and uh, the last recording I was wrong. My phone was saying it was ten fifty nine a.m., but uh. We got down the trail a little farther and we actually got cell signal for the first time on this whole trip. And uh, my phone updated to, you know, the right time, 10, 19 a.m. So we went back in time. Well, I, I, I traveled to the future and then traveled back in time. So, so yeah, we're thinking we're gonna make a lunch at Pine Glen Recreation Area, it says, uh, which is about, a little, little under two and a half miles ahead now. And it's been a pretty walk through here. Looks like we finally got out of that burn area. And we're into the wilderness now. But it is pretty back here. This is where I want to live. I guess all of these trails have their own beauty, like the Chiha Wilderness and and the Talladega National Forest down that way are pretty for their views. But down here, it's just the pretty forest itself. Yeah. And being that it's like 80 degrees out here, this is actually kind of comfortable. Uh oh, a bridge. Let's hope it's sturdy. <laughs> and a little gravel bar down the stream a little ways. There's a fish swimming down there. Yeah. 
Oh, and we're back in the burn area again. So this is what we've been seeing for like the last two miles. Has been blackness. And smelling like campfire. Which I don't mind the smell of campfire. Don't get me wrong. Whew. So yeah, we'll see you at lunchtime, y'all. And here is the green tunnel, folks. This is an absolutely beautiful hike down through here. It's so densely forested you would never know that it's as sunny and bright out as it is. This is absolutely gorgeous. feels like some kind of a fantasy world thing like I'm gonna come across seven dwarves out here mining somewhere or <laughs> maybe a tin man standing beside a cabin or something so we're probably Oh, I don't know. About a mile from lunch. So we should be there soon. We're doing about oh, a mile every 25 minutes or so. And that'll be the Pine Glen Recreational Area. And that'll be about the eight point some mile. Eight and a half mile, I think, point of the hike. And that leaves us only five and a half miles to camp. Which we should get there at a decent time this evening, be able to relax and enjoy the wilderness. So yeah, this is what we're doing. And this has to be one of the most beautiful hikes I've been on. It is just stunning out here right now. All right, so. <laughs> Here we are, we made it to uh, Pine Glen. It's a nice little campground out here. Uh, there's a stream over there to get water, so we got some fresh water and got it filtered. And um, there is absolutely zero cell service out here. Um, so to any of my friends that may have been texting me today or whatever, you'll know this already anyway, because I'll get back to you when I get home before I can even, uh, before I can even uh, upload this video, you'll already know. but. Yeah, there is absolutely zero cell service on this trail. Um, like, I get the little circle with a line through it. So, we're, uh, we made it to Pine Glen. It's a nice little campground. It's like $3 a day to stay here. Uh, it's a nice little place. There's families out here staying. Uh, there's a stream over there for fresh water. We met up with uh, one of Jordan's friends, Justin. Uh, he's uh, he's going to hike with us today. Well, he's going to hike ahead of us. He, uh, he just, he left at 10 o'clock this morning from the trailhead, and he hiked the eight miles to here in about two hours. It took us about four hours. Uh, we left at like 7.45 this morning from the trailhead, and we made the eight miles in like four hours. So he's much faster than we are. So he's going to hike ahead, I'm sure, and he's going to get to the shelter uh, six miles from here ahead of us. And uh, we're going to get there a little bit later, and then we will... Uh, We'll hang out with him tonight and probably just do a campfire and relax and have a good time. So yeah, it's a, it's a really nice hike, y'all. Really nice hike. Uh, it's a great section of the Pinhody. It's not a lot of ups and downs. I mean, there's some, but not like big climbs like there are over at the Chiha Wilderness. Um, this is still the Talladega National Forest. There's been some wildlife. I've seen some snakes and... Um, not harmful someone's uh, none of them are harmful snakes they were friendly well i mean as friendly as snakes can get i guess i didn't mess with them i didn't try to pick them up but yeah i got got one of them on video uh i think i got some pictures and yeah it's been a lot of fun uh really enjoying this weekend it's going to be a great great time and uh, i think uh jordan and i when we're done we're going to hit a uh, mellow mushroom it's the best pizza place there you can think of 
uh, after we're done the hike tomorrow, we're going to head to Mellow Mushroom in Oxford and have a, have a little after hike chow down. <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess we'll catch up with you here a little bit later on down the trail when we see something interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying myself. And I hope you all are enjoying the video with me. So, the Shenandoahs, if you're a member of we made it the to the shelter for the night. I think that's where I'm going to put my tent. Maybe sleep in the shelter. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of sprinkling right now. But this is the shelter area. It's absolutely beautiful. There's this hill that goes up there. There's plenty of tent sites. And then you've got this waterfall. Like right over here. You can probably walk down and across to get to it. And we'll probably cross over the stream right here. And walk down and get to it over there. So we did 14.2 miles today. It's my second highest mileage day ever. And we got a nice water source here. I can fill up my water bottle. And I think we're talking about starting a fire. If it isn't raining too much. So, yeah, I'll catch up with y'all later on when we get a fire going and we're hanging out. Most of the time, once you get off of your ankle and it rests, and then you put pressure back on it yep. the second day, it's more sore, right? fucking way worse. Way worse, yeah. yeah. I told him, I was like, no, here's the deal. Here's what's going to happen. I was like, I, I You wanted... went into Eagle, did you go into Eagle Scout? Mode? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, was, I was like, well, he told me that his girlfriend lives in Atlanta, too. He drives a Mercedes. He drives he, a Mercedes? No, his, his girlfriend, he drives a, a, a Ford pickup truck. Okay. Or something. And uh, she drives a Mercedes, like, C-Class, where it, like, rides low to the ground, like a sedan. Or oh, and there's, like... And, I, and he was like, she can come pick me up at Gooch Cap. I was like, no, she can't. 
I was like, she cannot drive down that Mercedes down Gooch Cat Road. I'm like, fuck no. So this, was, so this is what he did. I told him, I said, go hike a mile out of here tomorrow morning. I told, I gave him a number for a shuttle. It was like the uh, above the clouds hospital that shuttle too. And I talked to him on the phone the night before because we had service. I was like, yeah, my buddy got a phone make we can have to get off the trail. So, and then the shuttle just took him back to where you guys started. Well, no, the shuttle. The shuttle took him to, I told him to get a shuttle to Mountain Crossing, near Gap. You know what a big outfitter is, like the first, have you heard of Mountain Crossing? Yeah. It's like, uh... It's where most people quit. Yeah. <laughs> so is this where the guy fucking, they drop all their gear off and mail it back to the house? Yeah, that's where a lot of people, they do free but, pack shakedowns. But then, don't they say that that guy that runs that shop, there's, that's like the number one FedEx, oh, look at all the lightning bolts. Oh, that is fantastic. They've got like a really large uh, FedEx like. Yeah, because that, yeah. they get that's like uh, I say that's a probably about. Do you think people about just thirty miles north of Springer? I bet you that place has got good hiker boxes. Yeah, man, I dropped a bunch of shit in the hiker boxes too because I have way too much food. Yeah. And uh. They do a free pack shakedown to where they'll like go through a pack and they won't be dicks about it, but they'll be like Do you need this? Yeah. <laughs> they'll ask you how much how often do you use it? And But at that point, aren't tell, you like two and, days into the hike though? Yeah. So well, it's hard to answer that question because so I say that I read this blog from this girl, her name was Ashley Barnes. My mother sent me this blog like a few days ago. And she was blogging like Georgia. It took her fucking seven days to get to Unicoi Gap. Seven days to do the 50 miles, the 52 miles that I did in three days. Not knocking her, but like some people, uh, a lot of a, people out there have never been backpacking. Was she before. a through hiker? Yeah, she's a through hiker. So do you think she was just taking her time warming up, or do you think yeah. she had way too much weight in her back? She was like on the third day. No, I don't know. She's probably just not used to the terrain and the trail and, and living in the woods like that. But did you run into her? No. My mom just sent me this article from somewhere. I can't remember the, the source. Your she mom was from. like, you kicked her ass. No, that's no, not I'm how I kidding. felt about it. What's that? That's not how I felt about it. No, you don't. Know, <laughs> but <laughs> a little bit of me was thinking like, man, like, I was just putting it in perspective for myself. Like, well, you know, that's when you're thinking like, about damn, how far man. I've come. You know what you're I mean? Like, like, I was on fire. Right. Hell yeah. Not saying that I'm like better than her, but I'm just thinking about how much I've improved myself to where I was able to go do that shit in three days when novice hikers are doing it in seven. That's the know? whole point. But, uh. So, he, so what? He went to where the shop that. Out yeah, Mountain Center, Crossing at and Neil Gap. And then his girlfriend picked him up on Saturday? Yeah. So then, and then you know, um, here we are, day two. Um, Still in my tent. I uh, just woke up. It's uh, just a little after 6 a.m. Uh, I hear them moving around over in the shelter. So it's time for us to get up. Get moving. We put in a 14 mile day yesterday. And we've got about an 8 mile day out today to the end of the trailhead. And we're done with the hike. So, uh, yeah. Uh... I'm sore, I'm achy. It was quite a hike yesterday. Um, it's a beautiful trail. I uh, had a little fiasco yesterday. My vape, if you notice, my drip tip is all bashed in. And the screen is a different color than it should be. <laughs> I was helping uh, Jordan yesterday. And he dropped the cap of his water bottle in the river or the creek and it started floating away so I was trying to help him get it and I had my vape in my hand along with my trekking poles and it fell out of my hand and landed in the water upside down of course the batteries popped out water got inside of it and surprisingly I, I thought it was gone I thought it was over with and surprisingly it still works <laughs> Oh my god, it was a mess. Somehow or another, it never got water in the 
in the in the coil and the little bit of water that got in only affected the screen um kind of weird but yeah so that's uh that's what we got going on today my tent right now is a mess um all of my stuff is unpacked in my tent and i've got my little room to sleep in over here <laughs> my sleeping bag is all there at the end but I gotta get this all packed up and uh, get ready to hit the trail this morning. Eight miles should go by fairly fast. Um, I don't know. I, I I really don't know yet. So we'll uh, we'll see. So I'll catch y'all when um, we're ready to start hiking. So here we are, back on trail again. Uh, I've done probably almost two miles already this morning. Just a beautiful walk in the woods today. It's cloudy, overcast, a little cooler than yesterday. You wouldn't know it by the way I'm sweating. <laughs> uh, we had a good uphill climb out of camp. And uh, now it's just been kind of relatively flat walking along the the edge of these ravines see you see the little ravine goes down there we've been walking around the edges of these ravines uh jordan's a little ways ahead of me he got his earbuds in he's just making his own pace and that's what i'm doing here and uh just giving me time to hike along and enjoy the sights and sounds of nature as beautiful as it is out here this is probably one of the prettier hikes. There haven't been views. It's not been a. It's not been that kind of a hike. Uh, this has been more of a nature hike. Um, it's been really pretty, like what you're seeing now. Not every hike is big, magnificent views and all of that. And I don't need all of that all the time. <clears throat> it's kind of nice taking it easy on trails like this. This hasn't been a. Um, hasn't been a tough trail. Last mile, mile and a half yesterday was a little rough. It was a good uphill climb before you get to camp. Seems like they always put the climb right before camp. Or right before the trailhead to get back out. They never put the climb in the middle. <laughs> but not so bad. And we had the good one coming out of camp this morning. And then it's been what you see right now. Kind of just going down in these little ravines, crossing over the creek if there is one there, or where the water would flow off after a rain. And then you just go back up the other side again. <laughs> and a little bit of water there. It's not a very good water source, but I've got two liters on me already, so I don't need any more water. I need to drink some of this. <clears throat> to get some of the weight off of me. Yeah, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful day out here in the sounds. You just hear all the birds. All right, we got about six miles back to the car. And then me and him are going to hop in his car, drive back up to the trailhead where we started at yesterday, and pick up my car. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll catch up with y'all a little on farther down the trail. So, we hiked 19.3 miles to get to this. <laughs> This is the first view we've really had the whole trip. And uh, yeah, it's cloudy and rainy right now, but this is gorgeous, even in the rain. I don't even know what direction we're facing. I think we're facing west. Do you see Chihar in the background? Yeah, you can. In the 
between those two cell towers. Yeah. Barely just see it. Yeah. Right there. You can, yep, yeah, right there in the very center of my screen there, you can see Chiha Mountain. That is cool. I say that's Chiha. Yeah, I think that is, if it's not, then it's just to the left yeah, of the cell tower there. We're hiking southbound, which is towards Chiha. But I think that is because it looks like you can see the clouds being blown up over the top of it with like that yeah. little wisp of cloud coming up. Is the opposite direction. Like right, right there. Oops. Yeah, right there is Chiha behind, way back there on that ridge. That's awesome. Yeah, what a beautiful view. Took us 19.3 miles to get to it. We've only got about three more miles back to the car. And we'll be done with this hike for the weekend. It's been beautiful, really. I mean, this is what we've been hiking through. I mean, it's been a nature hike more than it's been a, a view hike. But I'll take it been a couple of good climbs we just had a pretty brutal one to get up here and then we had to go downhill to get to this after the climb <laughs> <Makes no sense>. <laughs> <laughs> oh so yep see y'all so back the clouds the clear there's another ridge line right there Behind the clouds that you couldn't see. Huh. And Chiha is more visible now. And you can see the ridge line behind it. That's where the Pinhoti Trail is that my last two videos were filmed on. Is that ridge line there on the other side where the big mountain is in the background there. And that is the Talladega National Forest, as far as the eye can see. Dega, baby. <laughs> yeah, I was there too. <laughs> last weekend. Oh yeah, you were. This time last weekend, I was sitting in the stands at Talladega, waiting for the race to start. I guess it's a good thing it was last weekend. Yeah. It probably would have been canceled. I got sunburnt. Oh man, did I get sunburnt last weekend. We're almost there. Pretty view out there. Sun came out, it got hot. I still got my rain gear on. You don't even want me to turn this camera around. My face looks like a water faucet right now. <laughs> it is hot out here. I am sweating. But, gorgeous trail. It's been a great hike so far challenging a couple good climbs that really tested what you're made of that's for sure and now we're just on the last uh, mile or so hike out headed back to the car so I'll see you when I get okay, here we go the last little bit to get out of here and of course it's got to be like straight downhill, which is better because honestly, the rest of the fucking Pinhoti, every section I've done, it's an uphill climb to get out. Yeah, I just checked, I just checked my GPS. It says 
So, yeah, well, I can see the car from here. Ooh, watch that root. It doesn't like feet. Oh, my knees. Oh. There's a water source. You need a water source? Right there. Yeah, well, we're heading that way. All right. We found the other end. So we hiked 19.3 miles to get to a view. And then we hiked another three miles to get to the car. To be able to drive another eight, nine miles to go get my car. Man, what kind of poop is this? Oh no, it ain't poop. It's parts off this tree. It looks like little piles of dog poop everywhere. It does, yeah. But it's all off this tree right here above us. Oh. Beautiful pine forest here. <sighs> and look at that. Only the second one of those I've seen since we left yesterday. The Pinhody logo. I need to get a patch with a Pinhody logo on it. Okay, so lessons I learned from this hike. One, I need to go back to REI, trade this pack in for a men's pack. Two, if you're watching Dixie, I'm sorry. I know it works for you, but your Stanco grease pot, I have wasted so much water because it keeps sliding off of my MSR Pocket Rocket 2 after it starts boiling. It's on there nice and steady and firm until it starts boiling, and then it just slides right off like it's sitting on ice and spills the boil boiling water everywhere. So... I need to get a different cook pot. There we are. And there's the car. Whoo! There we are, folks. Made it out. This is Forest Road 500 or Forest Service 500. That's why the trailhead is called FS 500. And there's that train still sitting there. Same engine. Now, if we take that trail, we could walk all the way to Heflin. Four miles. But, now three and a half miles to Heflin City Hall. The Cahulga Creek Dam is two and a quarter miles. Cahulga Creek Park is two miles. And Rocky Creek Bridge is one mile. I do not think we are parking or going to Heflin that way. Out out <laughs> yeah, yeah. We this is how we're gonna get to Heflin. Yeah. And then we gotta go get my car. Alright, y'all. Thanks for joining me on another one. And I'll see you on the next one. Roll tide. <laughs>